Did you know there is currently 2.4 million DVDs and Blu-rays listed on eBay alone? And there's been a lot of talk lately about is reselling DVDs even viable anymore? And for 99.5% of DVDs out there, it's probably not even worth your time to get involved in it. But if you are looking to get into selling DVDs, we're gonna go through step by step how to find the good DVDs, how to actually comp the DVDs properly, how to list, store and photograph all the DVDs and all the way right through to actually selling the DVD and posting it. So let's head to the warehouse and get on into it. As Brad just said, 99% of DVDs aren't worth anything and you're better off just using them as a frisbee. What the? Finding a reliable source of DVDs regularly is probably the biggest challenge because your places like op shops are going to have a whole range of just general titles at probably too high prices. You can also keep an eye out on places like Facebook Marketplace and Gumtree and sometimes you can get some gems on there when a collection is being passed on but you've got to look out because you could end up with someone's seconds. So where can you actually find some decent DVDs out there? Our biggest tip in the DVD space is get to the source. Whether that's your local op shop that dumps a whole bunch of DVDs and doesn't put them out on the rack, or if you go to like a recycling place, often a lot of DVDs will be there dumped for essentially free. So if you can find yourself a way of getting bulk DVDs at a really cheap price and really focus in on your sell through rate on what you're actually listing, that is a really hot tip on how to get good quality DVDs. I think you want to be asking yourself, where's all this stuff just getting dumped? And then how can you help to solve that bottleneck? Obviously, you can still find some really good bargains at, on Facebook or your local op shops, but you do need to know what you're looking for. And the easy one to keep an eye out for is stuff like TV series. Now, not every TV series out there is going to be worth money, but it's a good place to start. And as you will see as you go out more and more, you'll start seeing common ones, generally Pretty Little Liars and stuff like that that's generally not worth a heap of money. But once you start getting your eye in, you'll be able to spot things that you don't see so often and they're probably the ones you want to be looking up. Okay, I've got a couple examples here of stuff that has sold really well in that range of TV series and then we'll go to another category. So one that I have actually found ourselves is River Monsters. If you can get a complete set of that, that goes for crazy money and I haven't seen too many people talking about that one. Other examples is stuff like this Heartland. We've actually sold a set of this as well. That goes for a decent clip, so keep your eye out for that. Also stuff like Prison Cell Block H, uh, Blue Healers, obviously all those old school ones that are really hard to find, the Sullivans and stuff like that are gonna be your top end stuff. But there's a lot of mid range stuff between sort of 30 and $80 that you can find out there that will sell in the TV series category. The next category I wanna talk about is stuff like this, anime. Some of these anime sets go for crazy money, so keep an eye out for this sort of stuff. You're looking for like Naruto, your mobile suites, Dragon Ball Z even. If you can find any anime stuff, it is definitely worth a look up because some of these go for some seriously big dollars. Another category which I think probably gets overlooked a little bit is sort of 90s nostalgia and kids shows. So stuff like Keneal and Bernie, Goosebumps. You can do a quick search on eBay and filter by what has sold and we generally go $30 and up and it gives you a really good indication of what items are actually selling on the regular on eBay. One method that you might see people using is eBay's barcode scanner. We don't use this a lot because it only shows you a really select amount of the actual listings that are there and we kind of use it just to filter out which ones definitely aren't worth our time. But if you type into the actual search function you're going to see a lot more results. And do not forget to filter to what has actually sold because otherwise you're not getting the full picture. Okay, let's talk about listing. First thing when we're making a new listing is the title structure. And for DVDs and Blu-rays, the best way to structure the title is with the name of the movie and then the format, if it's a DVD or a Blu-ray, the region code, and then any other keywords. For example, if uh, the director or the main actor is a big draw card. The next vital step when you're listing DVDs is filling out the item specifics, and there are four of them that are required. I've got them here so I don't forget that it's the condition, the format, the title, and the UPC, which is the barcode. Not every DVD is going to have a barcode or a UPC on it, but you can go in there and select does not apply. 
Next up is the recommended item specifics and we try to fill out all of them that make sense. The very first one is region code and we always fill this out as though it was required. Then we put in the genre, the actor, the type. If it's a set of seasons, we go in and we select each number that's included so that they know exactly which seasons they're getting in case one's missing. If the studio is obvious or if it's a draw card, then we pop that in as well. And the language, because we do sometimes sell a foreign DVD or a DVD that's got a couple of different language options. We put in the rating and if there's a whole set of them, then we'll put in usually the highest rating so that people can be warned any special features and the director. The next thing that we're entering is the description. We always copy our title into the description and then we get straight into condition. So we let them know what condition the disc is in and the case and if there's any cosmetic wear or a broken disc holder, that is where to disclose it all. When you've put everything in your description that you want your customer to know, then you're going to put your pricing in for the item and select a postage option. If you have a store subscription, then you can set up postage policies, which is going to be really handy because in there it will have how you're going to ship that item as well as your returns policy and any payment policies. Depending on the size of the parcel, it's completely up to you if you want to send it tracked or untracked as a letter, but whatever you put into that section is what you have to do. So it's time to take photos. We've already drafted these and we've checked all of the discs. So we know now that we're definitely listing it and we're gonna go ahead and get some pictures. When we're taking photos of a big stack like this TV series, we like to have them all spine out sequentially and sometimes with one of them facing out. The reason we do this is because when we searched for what was selling for the highest prices on eBay, we could see a lot of the front photos were in this configuration. We try and use a minimum of six to 10 photos. You can go up to 24 photos if you've got different condition that you need to show or anything to disclose to your customer. The pictures that I do are the front of the covers, the back of the covers, the disc and the region code. As soon as our pictures are taken before anything can be lost or broken, they go straight into the box that they're going to be stored in. In this case, it is orange 137. We've already entered that information into our custom SKU in eBay so that we know exactly where this is when it sells. And we also have our cost of goods in there so that we can track how much we spent on this item. And our box goes straight back on the shelf with the other oranges so that we know where it is. All right, you've sold your item and now you're ready to ship it. Now there are a few different options from untracked to tracked. If you want to do untracked, you're probably only going to be sending one or two of these and you're going to be sending it in a smaller satchel and you're going to put two to three stamps on it, which will either be $2.40 or $3.60, depending on the weight. Also make sure you don't exceed 20 mil thickness in this because otherwise they won't let it through. Your next option is tracked in an envelope like this one, which depending on the region, if you're using my post business can anywhere between sort of $8 to like $11, depending where you're sending it to. So then you probably need to go up to like a small track parcel and we use these padded mailers because they are a little bit bigger than the standard mailers that you get and they have that little bit of protection and you can fit between eight and nine DVDs stacked up in these pretty safely. The next option is going up to like a medium padded mailer and you can sort of fit between 10 to 12 items in those mailers and that's probably gonna be anywhere between 11 and about $14 to ship. Any bigger than that, we start going to boxes all the way up to sort of a large box like this one here, which fits about 37 DVDs. Now we've never sent out a set this big, but if you have some low value stuff and you wanna get rid of it, this could be a good option for you as well. Now there is one more option that we see people use that we do not recommend, but a lot of people do use it. And it is these tracked letters, which come in at about $5.36 if you buy them in a pack of 10. And technically you're not supposed to send media through post like this but a lot of people do get away with it just know that if you do this and it becomes damaged or lost you will not be covered in terms of actually printing your labels on ebay or via my post business we've done a bunch of videos on this in the past and we will link them here for you so you can go straight to it happy dvd selling and thanks for watching to aussie thrifters we'll see you on the next one